right, September 13th, Tuesday, 8, I think, 05 in the morning. <laughs> uh, it's the RER Rear Engine Riding Mower Go-Kart Project Part 2. Uh, well, in case you can't tell, it, it's actually been repainted. Um, but it looks exactly the way it did when I got it in uh, the first video. Well, I like the color scheme on it and I decided to keep that style of the way it was when I first got it. So, I uh, got gloss black, uh, aged metallic copper, and um, painted it back up the same way. I did, however, change a couple of things. Um, the seat actually sets up higher now. I uh, welded those little uh, spacers in there. So I didn't like how the seat sit so low. The steering wheel set right about here and was also, instead of, see how it's straight now, but the steering wheel was cocked like this. And also when you looked straight at it, it was also cocked like that. So uh, I cut into the steering column right up here and bent it back where it needed to be and welded it back up. So it actually, when it turns, it's actually true. And before, when I turn it, it was all wobbly. <laughs> it looked really weird. Um, added this uh, side shifter on here. This is actually the deck PTO engagement rod for a uh, 90's Craftsman lawn tractor. Um, what I did is it actually was straight. I bent it up this way and then I pushed it forward and I put a shift knob from an MTD on it. Uh, the transmission was actually originally painted gold. I painted it black. I didn't like that part of it. Uh, Reglossed all the blacks. Everything that's black is gloss black now. Uh, this is actually a piece of rubber mat that I glued onto the brake pedal. Um, I don't know if you can see it too well or not, but I rubber I undercoated the entire bottom end of the uh, Go kart rubberized undercoating, and I cut a new floor mat for it from the old one. I used the old one as a uh, template, and I used that same rubber mat for the uh, did for the brake pedal. And I cut it. And you can see that's got these nice thick grooves. The blue paint you see is actually where I used a uh, paint marker to trace it off from the old one when I cut it. Um, but it fits in perfect and the engine for it well the engine I'm going to put on it uh, Riggs and Stratton 6.75 horse uh, just last night I actually drilled all the pop rivets out that holds this on and spun it around to pull start on this side it was over here And I already repainted it up in places, fresh, just give it a fresher look, you know. Uh, and also, the cool thing is, even though this didn't have a starter on it, it already has the flywheel teeth. So if I ever do want to put a starter on it, I can. There's the gas tank for it, and I found this other little uh, flywheel shroud. And uh, <laughs> this is a retaining spring that the previous owner put on this engine to actually hold the brake back. So what I'm going to do for a kill stop, I'm going to put a bar through here that's going to hook onto this. So I can actually have a manual push stop that will engage the brake and kill it. That way I don't have to put a toggle switch or anything on it, nothing fancy. And uh, some people have um, expressed their concern about running a push mower engine on this thing, but 
well I don't know much about the older lawn tractors and ones that had the small Briggs and Stratton engines but this was intended for three or four or five horse push mower engine block but uh, my parts book that I have a manual it doesn't say anywhere in there that those engine or that size of an engine had a some sort of an internal synchronized balancer like a lawn tractor engine does so I don't know if they had some sort of special flywheel to keep them from going out of whack or what but uh, the uh, we had a 3.75 Sprint engine on this and we ran it around just fine just like that with without having a blade or anything and it wasn't hard to start didn't have to worry we didn't worry about kickback or anything so I don't see much of a problem with it um, if you're wondering how tiny this thing really is I mean it's not that big at all um, I'm not quite six foot and I can still get on it myself it's a little compact but you know that's where my legs are now I told you the steering wheel used to be a lot lower <laughs> so <laughs> imagine it was way down there at one point that's pretty crummy this all this does is it actually actuates the belt tensioner which the more you press it like a, you would a gas pedal the faster it goes by increasing the belt tension and it has a manual brake separate from the clutch which is actually the gas it's, it's backwards it's weird uh, um, oh yeah and I've added a neck pad because my neck actually goes right there when I'm sitting on it so it's cool I like it it's neat um, I've actually come up with a pretty cool 70s sounding name for this 70s looking go-kart. I call it the Dixie Fox. So, I think it's kind of a perfect name for it. Small, lightweight, nimble little redneck thing. <laughs> but, uh... I still gotta get a pulley for it. This was the pulley that was on the uh, 3.75 horse. And after much fighting to get this off, stupid me, forgot that the shaft sizes were different. This is the well, part of the pulley. Uh, where's the other piece of it? There it is. This was what was on the 6.75. I actually had to cut it off to get it off of there. But uh, yeah, you can you can tell just by looking right there. I mean, so I can't use this. I have to buy another pulley from Tractor Supply. And that's like another 20 bucks. Fortunately, they have something cool now that I noticed. It's like it's a make-your-own pulley. You get the pulley section itself separate, which is like seven or eight dollars, and then you get this center part, the actual hub shaft. It slides down in there, you weld it in place, and you essentially make any pulley you want, any size for any size engine. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go up a couple of sizes. Uh, this is a four, I think I might go a four and a half or five inch uh, pulley on there. And I think the weight of the pulley will actually help with the uh, counterweight. Um, so yeah, it's uh, all for now, pretty much. So thanks for watching, and see you later.